Cool Jess, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I'm going to be reacting for the very first time to Ima Sumac. For Thishko, if you're watching this, you've been asking me since the dawn of time and today is the day. Apparently this is going to be like nothing we've ever heard before. Otherworldly. So as long as you're nice and comfy and you've got a nice little biscuit and a drink, we're going to get cracking. Okay, there's a flute in here as well. It's nothing like this, is it? It's hard to know when the flute thing stops and the singing takes over because it all kind of blends. And I think that's the point, isn't it? She's supposed to sound like something between a flute and a human voice. And I suppose that thing is a bird. It's kind of like a vibrato that then turns into a caprino and caprino is a style of vibrato that means baby goat because it sounds like a baby goat. How it's achieved is a very rapid movement of the glottis so the space between the vocal folds it kind of goes which gives you that jolt as opposed to a or even a a laryngeal style vibrato and so every time that glottis snaps shut especially if it's controlled well we get some beautiful little shimmers because of this rapid chopping up of breath it kind of shoots everywhere like little fireworks a caprino is a bit of a limiting name for it really you could also call it fireworkino the only italian words i know are musical terms food and swear words but the other thing is we've got two different vocal modes haven't we we've got strong and then Thin. It is magical, especially with the forest visuals. This woman can do everything. These low notes are gorgeous. What is that low note she sings there? Oh. It doesn't exist. It might be referred to as like a D half sharp between D and its little sharpie friend. I'ma go get some. Go dancing. I love it. It's so refreshing to get out of the Western scale for a second. There are so many more than 12 notes in the world and the scale system we sing in really totally depends on who taught us how to sing. If little birdies taught you how to sing, chances are it's not going to be a perfectly tempered 440 Western scale. And honestly, that is the least impressive thing out of all of it. I mean, what the barnacles is going on here? <laughs> Nice little tongue flick. Oh, blimey, that's a lot of notes. That phrase sweeps an octave and a half in like a second. Ah, beautifully sustained. Ah, that tone is gorgeous, completely in a different place. There's this little bit of compression going on in here to get that specific resonance. If her voice was to naturally fall to a lower note, you would have more of a more of an open sound. But notice it's not open at all. It's so you basically keep your voice low and put it into like a bit of a quack position. Because of the way the back of the tongue will bunch up and squish down in that shape, it's actually going to start to separate the note into overtones. They'll just start to separate. So you can hear those overtones appear from that tongue retraction where those overtones are starting to emerge. The flute's like, yeah, I 
I got you. Oh, that was nice. Excuse you, what on? Let's have a moment to gather ourselves. When she goes for a little Casper the Friendly Ghost moment, <laughs> those microtones descend. It's not something so tangible like a chromatic scale. <laughs> this is all of the notes between. <laughs> and then she whizzes off again. <laughs> And then just switches register like it's nothing. She just. But this position. A tiny little bit of the vocal folds together. Oh. And then she just goes straight down again. Who wrote this? Like, how does one fathom this musical work? There's yodeling and then there's that. That was so. Such a clean break. Yay! Like a jolt into that transition rather than a little switch. And you can see it in her body as well. That emphasis. Ooh. <laughs> when we have the destination note in mind, our voice kind of wants to just drag us down as fast as possible. Like, ah. But to bend it the way she's doing, like a. Just unsettling in the best way. Oh, I love this. That was a really good example here of the tongue manipulation we were talking about earlier in a different place. All you need to do is just pull the hump of your tongue, the little back bit, closer towards the back of your throat. And you just kind of stop when you start to hear that high note emerging. So now her false vocal folds have joined the songbird forest celestial extravaganza. Like a musical clearing of the throat. <coughs> if you uh, hear that sound emerge, manipulate that space back into that compression compartment and then get them flapping. Get your true vocal folds closing at the same time. You'll be barking into a parrot's bumhole like the best of them and so throat singing is a thing you know we know about it we've heard it before but not after you've heard someone yodel after you've heard someone do opera whistle tones caprino vibrato and that person is all the same person in the same song in two and a half minutes you know in the jungle with a parrot <laughs> I do love a musical breath, and this is a fabulous musical breath. <laughs> it's probably quite the breeze going on in that parrot's undercarriage. Oh, 
for goodness sake. Just as I was about to enjoy myself. That's enough. I've never seen anything remotely like it in my life. You'd think it would have started to sort of diminuendo at that point after, you know, the growling episode, but it was the opposite. Mama. So the same concept as that like throat singing car garage but instead of ah uh, the foundation is ah uh. fascinating with regards to that i mean i have no idea how one may sound so so bird like i mean what bloody note is that i think it's a c7 back into that opera mode to oh my goodness me the situation in there is probably very stiff tiny little bit of vocal fold closure maybe and some accentuated laryngeal movements kind of like a vibrato on steroids and then as the pitch starts to wind down she brings back in that <laughs> that more operatic shape <laughs> It's definitely up there with one of the most incredible things that's ever entered my ear holes. I am shocked, excited, relieved that I finally heard this and just overwhelmed by that whole experience. When you think you've heard it all, you never have. There's a good few billion birdies out there that are gonna be quaking in their nest. Maybe if she could learn a few phrases in Bird, she could do all kinds of things to gain their trust, couldn't she? Up until now, I thought Snow White was a big deal. So it's almost time for me to love you and leave you until the next video. But before I do, let's read today's oracle card. The greatest kindness you can give is to yourself. Prioritise that. Being kind can be setting boundaries, nourishing your body and soul, and living your life purpose. Your kindness will inspire others, and before you know it, that kindness will be radiating out of all of us, touching hearts and minds. You are all certainly that. Gosh, the loveliest people stop by these videos, and I'm so lucky you do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know down below in the comments, as it is always my pleasure. Love you loads and loads and loads. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Mwah! Bye! I've got my handy keyboard here, just in case we need to figure out any little noties. Oh crack it. Oh, the audio quality is very um, medieval. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it was recorded with a toaster. Right, we've got two flutes. That should be enough. What are you doing here? I mean, it sounds like other things too because it totally depends on the vocal tone you use. Oh, I don't know if it's a bit early to put my flute away. Oh well, I've done it now. I've done it now, I'm too bleeding late. It's like just as you get into it, she's like, ha <laughs> ha!